Welcome to this another video lecture on ENT. I'm Dr. Jawad and let's discuss today the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. So we have discussed previously and let us remind ourselves the that there is an external nose that we have discussed and then the nasal cavity or the internal nose. Now the internal nose uh, consists of the vestibule and the nasal cavity proper. The vestibule was this portion of the nose where we have the, uh, the hairs inside the nose so this is the region uh, this is the region on the inside of the nose which is lined by the skin then we have the nasal cavity proper which is lined by the mucous membrane and this nasal cavity proper had a medial wall a lateral wall a roof as well as a floor so we have discussed the medial wall the roof as well as the floor in the previous video so watch that before this one and in this video we will cover the lateral wall of the nasal cavity so First of all, the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. So, if you look at the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, you will see three turbinates. Now, these three turbinates are, um, are actually these are actually the bony projections, which are covered by the mucous membrane, of course. So, these bony projections are seen on the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, which are called as turbinates or concha. Now, the spaces be below each of these turbinates is called as a meatus of that. Um, respective concha so say for example here we have inferior concha so we have inferior meatus similarly middle concha middle meatus superior concha and the superior meatus now different opening of the sinuses and other stuff open into these meatus which we will discuss shortly and we will discuss each and every um, each and every of these concha as well as the meatus now here is important point to know that the upper and the lower uh, turbine and the upper and the middle turbinate so these are the part of the ethmite bone however the lower turbinate is a separate bone on itself so the upper two turbinate the superior and the middle turbinate these are ethmite and these are the actually the bony projection of the ethmite bone whereas the inferior concha that is a separate bone moreover the olfactory area lies in the upper part of the nasal cavity and help us over here upper part of the nasal cavity and help us to smell we will see the exact location and the detailed anatomy of all these structures uh, now and we will cover each of these one by one first of all starting with the inferior turbinate so we will go from down to top first of all the inferior turbinate as well as the meatus so the inferior turbinate as we have said that it is a separate bone whereas the other two are the part of the ethmite bone now in the inferior meatus as you can see this is the meatus that is lying below the inferior concha or the inferior turbinate now the turbinate is actually a bone and that is covered by spongy type of tissue the mucous membrane so this uh, area has large uh, so this turbinate and this mucosa that uh, that is present above it it has the ability to or grow and hyperplasia usually occur over here and this may block the air inflow as we have said that this inferior anterior part of this inferior turbinate it take part in the formation of the nasal wall if you remember the anatomy uh, of the previous video so this take part in the formation of the nasal wall which is formed um, over here near the vestibule so it is the narrowest area of the cross section uh, through the nose so this area mainly controls the airflow and the air resistance now if this uh, turbinate the inferior turbinate is enlarged so as a result the airflow is limited so that's important to know about this uh, inferior turbinate so we have covered its separate bone its inferior meatus has a uh, inferior meatus has an opening of the nasal lacrimal duct now we have done the uh, turbinate now let's talk about the meatus that is lying below it so this meatus below that is present uh, the inferior meatus so it has the opening of the nasal lacrimal duct you know the nasal lacrimal system i have discussed it in the uh, ophthalmic portion so we know that there are mm, there is the mm, punctum that lead, then leads into the canaliculi then there is the lacrimal sac and all of that and it finally comes through the nasal lacrimal duct and it finally opens over here into in, into the uh, inferior meatus now at this portion over here in the inferior meatus it is guarded by a mucosal wall that is called as the Hessner wall so that is the only opening that is present inside the inferior meatus the anterior portion from the nasal wall that we have discussed already so the point to take home this is the inferior turbinate it 
forms the nasal wall and that is the important to keep in mind and it has the inferior meatus has the opening of the nasal lacrimal duct now we will move to the middle turbinate that has so many structures and so important stuff and it is very very it has a very complex anatomy so just keep an attentive mind over here now the middle turbinate it is we know that it is ethyl turbinate that is it is formed from the ethmoid bone now it is attached via bony labyrinth and bony lamella so it is attached via bony lamella to the base of the skull as well as to the lateral wall as you will see shortly now it its attachment is very complex and you have to remember it in three portions first of all its anterior portion as you can see this here we have uh, discussed the uh, attachment of it so if you look at this picture so this is the lateral wall of the this is the lateral wall of the nose so do remember you are not looking in this looks like you're looking at the medial wall but no this is not the medial wall this is the lateral wall this is the lateral wall medial wall at the medial wall we know that there is a septum so this is not the medial wall this is the lateral wall and you are looking from medial to lateral side on it so so this lateral wall is actually if you look at this attachment and this is the inferior turbinate and this is your middle turbinate so this middle turbinate is attached first of all in the front region it is attached to the base of the skull so basically it is attached to the uh, lateral edge of the cribriform plate so base of the skull lateral edge of the cribriform plate if you see uh, this portion this is your cribriform plate at the ethmoid bone so just lateral to it you can see just lateral to it it is attached to the skull bone basically this attachment is if you are looking if you go down inside the meatus and then you look at the attachment then this will look like this so this is just lateral to the ethmoid this is your ethmoid bone and just lateral to it on the this side you can see this attachment the anterior attachment then the middle one third as you can see the, the middle one third attachment is in the frontal plane the first attachment was in the this was in the sagittal plane however the second attachment that you will see that uh, the second portion that is in the sagittal uh, that is in the frontal plane or the vertical plane so now this vertical plane it is attached to the lamina papyracea now the lamina papyracea is actually the pepper like it might bone that is forming the medial wall of the orbit if you look at this slide here i have shown that uh, this is the picture from the anatomy of the eyeball so if you look at uh, and i have discussed it that uh, you can remember the medial wall of the orbit by the mnemonic that mle so medial for mle like muhammad ali so the here is your maxilla then you have the lacrimal bone then you have the ethmoid bone so the ethmoid bone over here so this ethmoid bone is very very thin this ethmoid bone like here it is very very thin and that's why it's called as the paper like bone or the lamina papyracea on the medial side here you can see these are the ethmoid air cells or mid and this are actually the anterior ethmoid cells or sinus ethmoid sinus and this is your middle turbinate or middle nasal concha that is attached over here to the lamina papyracea so this is the middle uh, this is the middle portion of the middle turbinate so the middle one third is attached to the lamina papyracea on the if you see the on the lateral side over there so there is an orbit and the medial side of the orbit so this is attached to the lamina papyracea it separates the anterior and the posterior ethmoid air cells or sinuses so this is the anterior it might air sinus and if you can see that if this attachment is like this on, on the posterior to it it's just like this in the uh, frontal in the vertical plane or the frontal plane so you can see that these sinuses will be separated from the sinuses that are lying posterior to it so anterior and then the posterior ethmoid sinuses are separated by this now since it is it stabilizes the middle meatus it is also called as the ground lamella or the basal lamella so this is also called the basal lamella and we have said that this attachment is actually called uh, is via bony lamella so this attachment is called as the ground lamella or the basal lamella now the posterior attachment is in the horizontal plane and is attached to the lamina papyracea in front so this posterior attachment is in the horizontal plane and it is attached over here since it is attached to the lamina papyracea so uh, it is attached to the 
uh, lamina papyracea so so this region is also in the lam attached to the lamina papyracea in front and then behind it is attached to the maxilla over there you can see there will be the maxilla so um, maxillary so uh, it is attached to the middle wall of the maxilla it forms a roof over the middle meatus mm, of course so this is actually the roof of the middle meatus if you see we have studied that we are, we are looking at this attachment from going inside the meatus so if you're looking inside the meatus so this roof will be formed by this uh, the horizontal plate so point here to remember is the middle meatus we have tr uh, the attachment is divided into three portion the anterior portion is attached to the skull base in the sagittal section then the second attachment is in the uh, frontal section and it is to the attached to the lamina papyracea and the third attachment is in the horizontal plane and it is attached to the lamina papyracea in front whereas to the maxilla behind keeping this in mind let's move forward <coughs> we have discussed that here is the lamina papyracea here is the middle turbinate here is the inferior turbinate and this is attached these are the anterior ethmoidal air cells and this is the orbit and over here is your lamina papyracea that is explained now we will move to the middle meatus and that's where lots of structure are present and lots of confusing thoughts you can have first of all the basic big big structures first of all here you can see first of all the uncinate process that is this process that is uncinate basically means a hook like process so you can see this is a hook like process that is present in the middle meatus you have to remember that this is the the concha is lying above it so we have just cut down the concha and we are looking at the meatus now so this is the lateral wall we have cut down the concha and now we are looking at the meatus in that we have the uncinate process this hook like process then we have the hiatus semilinearis which is actually this thin uh, gap in between the bulla ethmoidalis as well as the uncinate process this bony projection is called as the bulla ethmoidalis then there are two fontanelli you can see the uh, the fontanelli are actually the regions where there is only membrane if you uh, look at this little wall so all this stuff is made up of the bones but this region over here there is no bone present over here and here and behind that is actually the maxillary sign literal to it is actually the maxillary sinus so this region is just covered by the mucous membrane and that's why it's called as fontanelli and this uncinate process divide this fontanelli into posterior as well as anterior fontanelli now then there is infundibulum this hiatus semilinearis leads over here into the uh, channel mm, a thin channel that then opens into the a maxillary sinus as well so that thin channel over here that is called as infundibulum we will discuss each and uh, each of these topics separately and we will explain them then there is frontonasal recess opening of the frontonasal duct over here just lying here so there is uh, there is a fr this is the frontal sinus and lying all over here is a frontal recess or also called as frontal nasal duct so that opens over here in the middle meatus then there is a bulla ethmoidalis the bulla ethmoidalis is here we have explained that already uh, it is actually the anterior air cells so they form this bony projection then there is opening in the middle meatus we will discuss all the openings in the middle meatus that which um, which of the sinuses open into this meatus so we will discuss each and every of these uh, topics now first of all starting with the uncinate process now the uncinate process you know the hook like process since the name indicates it's uncinate so um, it's hook like you know the uncinate process of the pancreas that is also hook like so the uncinate means the hook like process that is you can see over here so it is a structure of the ethmoid bone and it is present in the middle meatus and it is running from the anterior superior to the posterior inferior direction anterior superior to the posterior inferior direction it runs in that manner now the is posterior superior border is sharp it's attached to the posterior superior border this border is sharp and it runs parallel to the anterior border of the bulla ethmoidalis so you can see this sharp border runs parallel to the bulla ethmoidalis and the gap in between them is called as the hiatus semilinearis this gap is called as hiatus semilinearis it is a slit like gap in between these two 
now if you look, you look at the attachment of this uh, uncinate process you can see clearly that the anterior inferior border of it this portion anterior uh, no sorry anterior inferior portion this portion border of the uncinate process attached to the lateral wall so this anterior inferior border this is attached to the lateral wall whereas the posterior inferior end of the lateral border is attached to the inferior turbinate it is attached to the inferior turbinate whereas the anterior superior border is attached to the lateral wall now the next thing is that uh, the upper attachment of the uncinate process shows great this upper attachment shows great amount of variation it may be attached to the lateral nasal wall as shown here it may be attached to the lateral nasal wall as shown here it may be attached to the base of the skull or medially into the middle turbinate so it may be attached to the base of the skull lateral wall or the middle turbinate that's all about its attachment now the fontanelles areas we have discussed that this fontanelles area you can see these areas are divided of bone so these are divided of bone and they are just gonna if you put in the membrane over there so it is present uh, just membrane is present over here and behind them uh, no sorry lateral to that is the maxillary sinuses so if you rupture this membrane so you will uh, perforate into the maxillary sinus now um, that's I think all about the uncinate process it's this hook like process it's attached over there and the hiatus simulnaris is the region in between these there is a bullet my Dallas so that's all about that the uncinate process let's move forward now let's talk about the infundibulum so this is a pretty complicated uh, structure so the hiatus simulnaris leads into the curved channel that is called as infundibulum this hiatus simulnaris over here leads into a small channel that is called as infundibulum and it is bounded medially by the uncinate process so if you, you see this uncinate process so if you cut it down below it you will be uh, finding the infundibulum so medially by the uncinate process and um, moreover also the frontal process of the maxilla and literally by the lamina papyracea over there is your bony orbit so uh, in between that a small gap a small channel is present that is called as infundibulum here you can see clearly that you can see that this is your middle turbinate this is your inferior turbinate this is your middle turbinate so just we have said that medial to the middle turbinate and uh, no sorry lateral to the middle tur turbinate because this uh, infundibulum is lined medially by this inferior turbinate and, and moreover the maxilla will be present over here so it is lined medially by the maxilla as well as the middle turbinate and it is bounded laterally by the uh, by the lamina papyracea of the orbit so this is a small region that is called as the infundibulum this small portion and over here you can see that the maxillary air sin maxillary sinuses so they open into the lower portion of this infundibulum so in this way the maxillary sinuses are drained into the middle meatus hope you understood the infundibulum it is a pretty complicated top uh, complicated structure you know this is the middle meatus just put in a bit of attention over here this is the middle meatus this is the sorry this is the middle turbinate this is the inferior turbinate this is the middle meatus and over here you can see this is the uncinate process this small bony projection this is uncinate process and this uncinate process that is shown here so it is present like this and going posteriorly as well so this is your uncinate process over here is your lamina papyracea on the inside so uh, sorry this uh, the, here is the lamina papyracea this is the ethmoidal air cells that is forming the bulla ethmoidalis over here and this region in between the bulla ethmoidalis and uncinate process is called as the hiatus simulnaris so this hiatus simulnaris is going posteriorly like this you see this is going all the way posteriorly here you are just looking at one section so now and this small region and this small it this hiatus simulnaris leads into this small channel that is called as infundibulum and this infundibulum then leads into the maxillary sinuses so in this way the maxillary sinuses are drained now let's move ahead the frontal recess of the nasal nasofrontal duct 
the frontal recess that opens into the hiatus semilunaris over here so you see that the frontal recess is actually the opening of the frontal sinus so you can see the frontal sinus over here uh, frontal sinus is actually the sinus of the frontal bone and now it opens into the over here into the uh, middle meatus we have this bony canal that is called as the frontal sinus or uh, that is called as the nasofrontal duct or the frontal recess now the frontal recess drains into the middle meatus directly in 62 percent of cases and into the ethmoid infundibulum in 38 percent of the cases so it may enters into the enter into the middle meatus or it may enter into the ethmoid infundibulum uh, that we have studied that it is present beneath this uncinate process over there so it may open into the ethmoid infundibulum or it may open directly into the middle meatus so that's all about the frontal recess now let's talk about the, this bulla ethmoidalis now the bulla ethmoidalis as you all know that it is actually the anterior air cells of the ethmoid now you know the uh, first of all just a brief overview of the general anatomy of the ethmoid air cells so the ethmoid air cells are actually ethmoid air cells or the sinuses they are three in number and they are present anterior middle and posterior so the enlarged anterior air cell formed a curved protuberance in the middle cavity in the middle nasal cavity and that is called as the bulla ethmoidalis now when there is a so that is called the bulla ethmoidalis now when there is a space above this bulla ethmoidalis or below it or uh, above or behind it so those are called as suprabullous or retrobullar space say for example here look at these structures here you can see this is your inferior turbinate this is your middle turbinate and this is your middle meatus now over here in the middle meatus you can see this et anterior ethmoidal air cell and this bony projection is called as the bulla ethmoidalis now behind if there is a space now you are looking at the coronal section so sorry this is at the top of the bulla ethmoidalis so if it is attached at the uh, the uh, middle turbinate is attached a bit up on the upside so there is a space you can see this so this is your suprabular recess or suprabular space it's mainly called a suprabullous recess and if there is if it is present behind this bulla behind as seen over here in the um, transverse plane if you look at the transverse plane so here you can see this is the middle turbinate middle turbinate and this section is taken at level where inferior turbinate and uh, this turbinate cannot be seen so we are looking at this section the transverse section and we are looking from above you have taken a section at this level and we are looking from above so this is your middle turbinate over here is your ethmoid air cell anterior ethmoid cell this is your bull, uh, bulla ethmoidalis the bony projection above it here is this whole portion is your me just the air um, the airflow region sorry this is the airflow region now you can see that this is the infundibulum and over here is the bullet medal so this is hiatus simulinaris over here inside it is the infundibulum this is the bulla ethmoidalis and there is a small recess behind it and that is called as retrobullar recess so hope you have understood it the space about the uh, bulla ethmoidalis is called as suprabullous recess whereas the space behind the bulla ethmoidalis is called as retrobullar recess now these these two when combined they are called as lateral sinus so when combined these two are called as the lateral sinus now this lateral sinus is bounded superiorly by the skull base or here it is bounded superiorly by the skull base it is bounded laterally it is bounded laterally by the lamina papyracea superiorly by the skull base laterally by the lamina papyracea it is bounded medially it is bounded medially by the middle turbinate as you can see that this is bounded medially they are combined called as the lateral sinus so you can see this is bounded medially by this middle turbinate whereas they are bounded posteriorly by the uh, uh, basal lamella of the middle turbinate so you can see the we have said that when it attach uh, when the second attachment we have studied that when the second attachment is 
like this in the frontal plane so it actually divides the anterior cells from the posterior cell so the anterior ethmoid cells are here so this attachment actually uh, divide uh, this attachment actually uh, form the posterior boundary of this uh, retrobular space or the lateral sinus so that was all about the bulla ethmoidalis and its complex anatomy moreover the cleft uh, like communication between the bulla and the skull base and the opening into the middle meatus is uh, is also called as the hiatus semilunaris superior so the small gap the opening uh, the in between the skull base and the middle meatus and this is called as hiatus semilunaris superior whereas the over here this uh, uh, portion which we have discussed that this is the hiatus simulnerus so this is actually hiatus simulnerus inferior but this is not a high yield point and not that important just remember that this area in between the uncinate process and the bullite medalis so this region this slit like gap this two dimensional gap is called as the hiatus simulnerus now let's move ahead and the next thing is the structure that are related to the middle turbinate and the middle meatus now these are important structures which you have to remember first of all is the agar nasi now the agar nasi is just elevation that is present in front of the middle concha so the uh, the middle concha or the middle turbinate so above it there is a small elevation that is called as agar nasi and there is a small depression which leads into the middle meatus so that is called as the atrium of the middle meatus now the about the elevation now this agar nasi when it is pneumonized that is when there is um, uh, air present inside it when it is hollow and there is air present inside it so what does uh, what it does that it can that these air cells um, they communicate with the frontal recess we have studied that this is your frontal recess and over here is the middle concha and if they are present over here if the agar nasi uh, contains air cells so they will communicate with this frontal nasal recess moreover if this uh, air cells in, enlarges what will it does that it will block this uh, um, this frontal recess and as a result the drainage of the frontal air sinuses will be compromised so that's important to know about the agar nasi moving a bit further there is there may be pneumonization of the middle concha or the middle turbinate so pneumonization means air cells may be present in the middle concha as well so here is the ct uh, in this you can see this is the inferior turbinate this is the middle turbinate that is attached like this into the lamina papyracea so you can see that the middle turbinates have been pneumonized normally they are a solid structure if you look at the posterior previous structures so you can, you will see that the middle turbinates are actually solid structures so when it is pneumonized like this so they are enlarged and they are called as concabulosa they are ballooned out so these are called as the concabulosa and what's important about the concabulosa that it uh, drains into the frontal recess directly or through the agar nasi so just anterior to it are present the agar nasi which usually drain into the frontal recess so it may drain into the frontal recess directly over here so if this enlarges and pneumonize so it may uh, drain into the agar nasi which is present anterior to it and that agar nasi then drain into this frontal recess that is present over here in between these or it or this uh, concabulosa may drain directly into this uh, in, into this frontal recess or nasofrontal duct moreover there are some other structure that is called as hiller cells now the hiller cells are the air cells that are situated in the roof of the maxillary sinus here is your here is your CT so this is normally this is your maxillary sinus this is the infundibulum that lead into the hiatus simulnerus and this hole is your middle meatus these are the ethmoidal air cells, air cells that are shown over here so this is the middle meatus hole and this drains over here into it now and this section just does not uh, show proper bony arrangement otherwise this will be uh, blocked over here so this is the air cells and the east will drain into the uh, middle meatus however you can see that the hiller cells these are the cells that are present at the roof of this maxillary sinus so these air cells and the thing about this is that if they enlarges 
so what will they do is that they will block this infundibulum and as a result the uh, drainage of the max of the maxillary sinuses will be compromised so those are the hiller cells and the other we have studied the concabulosa and we have also studied the agar nasi cells so these are pneumonization of the bones uh, that are related to the middle turbinate now let's talk about the superior turbinate and the meatus. Thank God that the middle turbinate has ended. Now let's talk about the superior turbinate is easy. So it is lying posterior and superior to the middle turbinate. And I'm sorry, it is middle turbinate. So posterior and superior to the middle turbinate and below it is the middle meatus. Uh, so sorry, superior meatus. And the ostium of the sinus sinus is superior medial to it in the sphenoethmoidal recess, just above it. Uh, above the superior turbinate is your is your superior sphenoethmoidal recess. So in this sphenoethmoidal recess, this sphenoid sinuses uh, drain into it. So as a result, um, so just remember that the uh, the sphenoid sinus open into the sphenoethmoidal recess. Moreover, the area below the turbinate is superior meatus, and the posterior ethmoid cell open into it. The onodi cells in the posterior ethmoid cells are significantly important. Now the only uh, now you can see that the posterior ethmoidal cells that are present over here. So some of these cells, the most posterior of it, that are called as the onodi cells. Now what they do that they may enlarge, they may pneumonize uh, this area. Now this area may they they may go above this sphenoid sinus or lateral to it. In both cases, here is lying your optic nerve. So this area is very very important to the surgeon that it mm, so that it is clinically important these onodi cells because they are related to the optic nerve moving ahead olfactory cleft so the olfactory cleft is actually this small cleft that is present so and the olfactory cleft is actually the narrow chamber located under the cribriform plate and between the turbinate wall and the corresponding nasal septum you can see over here that it is present uh, it's a narrow chamber that is located under the cribriform plate there is your cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and between the turbinate wall and the nasal septum on the medial side so if there is a med uh, on the medial side is the nasal septum and over here is the cribriform plate and just above the conca about the attachment of the uh, this turbinate wall so these form your uh, superior region and this over here uh, is your cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone above it is the olfactory bulb and through this cribriform plate which has small sieve like openings through these the branches of the olfactory nerves come and they uh, supply this area of the mucosa as you can see here this is your inferior turbinate here is your middle turbinate here's your superior turbinate this is the nasal septum so in this small cavity in between the nasal septum and the turbinate wall so this small area is called as olfactory area or the since it is very narrow so that is why it is called as olfactory cleft so this area is supplied by the olfactory and uh, branches of the olfactory nerve and thus it help us in the sense of taste or here is a CT the maxillary sinus the inferior turbinate the middle turbinate that is going over here and is attached to the base of the skull this area this section is actually taken uh, over here so the anterior portion of the turbinate wall so it actually goes above and it is attached to the skull base as we have uh, studied already so here you can see and here is the septum in the middle so this small portion as depicted by this uh, red arrow so this is your olfactory cleft and it helps us in the olfaction sense of smell so thank you that was all about that and let's just revise ourselves we have on the lateral wall we have three turbinates the middle uh, the inferior the middle as well as the superior turbinate and above those is your supra uh, there is this phenoethmoid recess where there is opening of this phenoid sinus then the it, the below the superior below the and this one the inferior concha you have the inferior you have the inferior meatus in which the nasolacrimal duct opens below the 
middle conca, you have the middle meatus in which you have bulla ethmoidalis on which there is opening of the anterior ethmoid air cells. Over here in the hiatus semilinaris, there is infundibulum in which the maxillary sinus train. Then there is also uh, opening of the various uh, the anterior ethmoid air cells as well. Moreover, the middle uh, middle ethmoid air cell also open on the bulla ethmoidalis. There is uh, nasof uh, nasofrontal nasofrontal duct or the frontal recess that open into the hiatus semilinaris in the middle meatus. Then there is a superior meatus and in the superior meatus the posterior ethmoid air cell open and above that is your sphenoethmoid recess in which the sphenoid sinus strain. So that was all about it. Thank you and if there is any shortcoming let us know in the comment section below and do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.